Welcome back to SHOT Show 2024. My name is Chris Lee. I'm the Midwest Director of Government Affairs for the National Shooting Sports Foundation. NSSF is the trade association for the firearm industry. I'm here with the great Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost. Attorney General Yost has been a great supporter of the firearm industry in Ohio, as well as the Second Amendment rights of Ohioans across the state. Attorney General, thank you for being here. It's good to be with you. So we'll get right into the questions today. There's a lot going on in Ohio. Legislative session just kicked off, but you released a study just a couple weeks ago. We often hear people on the other side of the Second Amendment argument, the Second Amendment right, they, they say that constitutional carry will lead to increased crime in the streets across the state. And Ohio was a state that recently passed constitutional carry. And Attorney General, you conducted a study that showed that the opposite of what the gun, con the gun control groups claim will happen actually happened in Ohio. And the big city mayors. You know, everybody was talking about it's going to be the Wild West, there's going to be blood in the streets. I want to find out what the truth was. I, I think facts are an important thing as we debate public policy. So we took a look at the year prior to constitutional carry and a year after constitutional carry. And lo and behold, not only did the, the did Gun, bad, gun crime not go up. It actually went down in six of our biggest cities. And that's pretty remarkable. I mean, we're not surprised. We've known that this would happen, that this would be the case. We've seen constitutional carry passed in, in over 25 states now, and crime's not going up in the states where it's been passed. It's the other side trying to create fear of our constitutional rights. And while we're talking about the big city mayors in Ohio, the big city mayors in Ohio are trying to go actually beyond what state law allows through preemption. Preemption in Ohio says that cities can't go beyond what the state allows in regulating firearms, and they're still trying to do it. Can you give us an update on where that fight over um, our constitutional rights relating to municipalities trying to regulate firearms, can you tell us where that battle stands right now? Well, it's winding its way through the courts. Uh, we do have stays in place so that these local ordinances aren't able to create a patchwork of a quilt of different laws where you cross a city line and you went from law-abiding citizen to criminal. Um, ultimately, this will go up to the Ohio State Supreme Court, and I'm very hopeful uh, about our chances there. I mean, at the end of the day, this is not the United Cities and Counties of America. It's the United States of America. The counties are subdivisions of the state. The cities are chartered by the state. Uh, and when the state uses its sovereign power to establish a uniform law, a uniform rule for the entire state so all citizens are treated equally, that is not uh, a, a matter that the locals are allowed to just come in and say, well, we don't think so. Right. Well, thank you for your work in defending Second yeah. Amendment rights of people on, on that issue. And like I said, legislative session there in Ohio just kicked off. And, and we, as the Firearm Industry Trade Association, are working with partners like the Buckeye Firearms Association in Ohio on legislation to protect consumer privacy when they're shopping at a gun shop. So a lot of people might have, know, might have seen the news back in 2022. It was announced that the big credit card networks were now approved to start tracking purchases at firearm retail shops. And the other side has shown us how they want, want it to work. And they, they basically want to identify who's going to gun shops so that they can report all these law-abiding people that go to gun, gun shops. They want to report them to law enforcement. They want to put them on lists. It's really concerning. And your office signed on to a letter um, kind of a, against the application of this code at firearm retail shops and in support of bans on that code. Can you tell us more about your support of that effort? Sure, and I think there's going to be a, a lawsuit if they press the issue. But this is the thing that the left is increasingly trying to do, uh, not just uh, on the Second Amendment. They're trying to get private industry to do the things that the government is not allowed to do. Uh, we see this in social media. You know, the government's not allowed to say you can't speak badly about whatever the issue is, vaccines or whatever. Um, it's a free speech issue. Government can't forbid speech. But if they can get Facebook or Twitter to forbid your speech, that's not the government, or at least that's the, where the theory is, and there's lawsuits over that too. It's exactly what they're trying to do here with these so-called codes. And while I appreciate you calling it privacy, 
this isn't about privacy, really, in their minds. This is about being able, this is about surveillance. This is about knowing who's buying what and who's buying it more frequently than Big Brother thinks that is healthy for you. Uh, this is going to be used against law-abiding citizens um, who are engaging in transactions that the regime does not approve of. Uh, that's not freedom. This is still a free country. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep pushing back. Great. Well, that bill in the Ohio Senate is actually supposed to be voted out of committee very soon, so we could be making progress there. Maybe today. Maybe today it could happen, and Senator Johnson is leading that effort there in Ohio, and we appreciate that, and we appreciate your support of that bill, and like I said, your support of our industry in general. So thank you for being here at SHOT Show. It's good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you.